Welcome again to Devotion and Prayer with the devotional, Prepare the Way by Joe Ingalkemeyer. Today's reading is February the 1st, A Fatal Assimilation. Remember Lot's Wife, Luke 17, verse 32. Why did Jesus, in discussing his return, include these terse words, Remember Lot's Wife? You remember the story. The guests who had come to her home had clearly demonstrated they were more than ordinary beings. During Sodom's final minutes, they had accompanied her and her husband and the only two children who would listen to the edge of the plain outside the city. Their command, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, had been given with startling urgency. But she did look back and perished. While her body was upon the plain, her heart clung to Sodom, and she perished with it. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 161. Her heart was in the wrong place. She had been assimilated into Sodom. Her investments were there. Her home was there. Her pleasures were there. Her heart inevitably was there too. How is it with us? Have the pleasures of Sodom imperceptibly infiltrated our, heart, our hours of leisure? Have we become fascinated by Sodom's entertainments? Have we adopted Sodom's fashions? Is the music of Sodom heard from our stereos? Lot's wife has been characterized as selfish and religious. This about sums up everything else. Her unwillingness to deny self her habits of indulgence, her craving for luxuries. The Sodoms of today are sophisticated, affluent, sensual. Are we being assimilated into this sophistication? Are our thoughts more upon the luxuries and indulgences of Sodom than upon preparation for heaven? Does the call for revival fall upon deaf ears? Are we strangers to the deep movings of the Holy Spirit? Would we label an outpouring of God's Spirit fanaticism? It has happened. It happened at Battle Creek in 1893 when the Holy Spirit was striving with the youth and teachers there. The blessing that might have come was turned away. See Councils to Teachers, pages 357 through 368. Could it happen again? Are some of the attitudes of Lot's wife still with us? A fatal assimilation. Remember Lot's wife. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for being God, holy, pure, undefiled. Sin cannot be in your presence. We praise you for being our Father. For thank you for loving us. We praise Christ for being our Savior. The Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Thank you for their ministry on our behalf. We confess that we're sinners and we need the blood of Christ. We need Christ to cover us. We need the Holy Spirit to abide in us, to cleanse us from sin to take charge, and Lord, all we can say is take our will and let your will be done in, in us. Live out your life in us, Lord, and be with us, Lord. Raise us up to be your people. Lord, as we now look at the questions asked, I think every single question asked about the church in relation to Lot's wife Every single question about the church, about our hearts, in relation to Sodom, will have to be answered with a yes. Even would revival and reformation, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, be called fanaticism? Yes. How can we say this, Lord? Because we only will receive the Holy Spirit at prayer and through Bible study. But Lord, if you go to your churches for prayer meeting or if you go for Bible study, you will see 
very few, a remnant. You will see a small number, like it was in the day of Lot with him and his children, as it was with Noah and his family. Out of the large numbers in all churches, you go to any church for prayer meeting, and you'll find a small number. But that's where the power is, Lord, in prayer. Go to Bible study and you'll find that many churches aren't having it. But if that's the power, if we experience you through your word, then how can we experience the Holy Spirit? Therefore, Lord, if the Holy Spirit is poured out, it has to be considered fanaticism because we're not ready to receive it. Lord, Sodom is in us. We have been assimilated. Lord, your counsel was for us to be separate, to be apart, to not become like the world, to become like you. But we, like Lot's wife, like Lot, we've become assimilated. We've entered into the world, and the ways of the world are now our ways. We don't even question it. We don't think, why do I do this? We think this is what I do. I dress this way. I eat this way, I do my business this way, I raise my children this way, and if someone makes the notion to say, you know, the Bible says, or what about the counsels from Ellen White, that person we know for a fact is considered a fanatic. To ask someone, well, what does the Bible say about food, we receive responses negatively. We speak about dress negatively. We speak about lifestyle negatively. Lord, if we simply said, let's see what it is, then respond, that would be okay. But Lord, we are at the place where we don't want to study your word anymore. Lord, I'm not talking about others. I'm talking about myself because while we can always look at others, there's always a part of yourself that you need to improve, Lord the Sodom in me, or the sin in me, I need to be removed. Whether it's a lot or whether it's a little, it doesn't matter, it's sin. And Satan has planted this way for us to become assimilated, for us to enjoy the ways of the world, the ways of this crowded city living, this crowded living that only glorifies Satan, these artificial lights. There are false entertainments, false pleasures that glorify Satan. Lord, once again, we've been praying for revival. We've been praying for reformation. And Lord, we realize we need to make that covenant. We claim that covenant with you, Lord. We claim your promises. So we're claiming that you will work in each and every one of our hearts. Point out the sins in us. Bring it to our attention in every single aspect of our lives. Every area of our lives. Make it a practical Christianity, not a head religion, an intellectual religion, but practical. The problem of Lot's wife was that she had an intellectual understanding of the situation. She had a realization that there were angels in front of her. But in her heart, in her practice, in her desires, she still loved Sodom. If she could have had her way, she would have stopped the destruction of Sodom and not have gotten out. That's the problem, Lord. If you really allow us to be us and to be ourselves, we would likely choose the sin over you. So, Lord, remove the sin from us. Pull us away from the sin. Help us to be taken away. But once again, we have been corrupted completely. And once again, Open our eyes so that we can see. Let us see clearly where we have fallen short, where this was not your plan, as Lot was not to live in Sodom. He was not to even pitch his tent towards Sodom. And then when you gave the clear instruction, they were taken out, but they still had Sodom in their hearts, Lord. It's even a reminder for us who want to do reforms. We can outwardly eat healthy. We could outwardly dress a certain way. We can stop watching certain things or stop saying certain things, but as long as the sin is still in our hearts, as long as we say, oh, if I only could do it, even if I don't do it, but I desire to do it, it's still, it is still sin. 
Lord, we and the only way to get it out of our hearts, out of our minds, is what you have to do. So, Lord, we are in a bad place, but we're not about pointing fingers. We're saying, Lord, get us out of Sodom and get us all out safely and help us to get out and not look back, which means help us to have our eyes on heavenly things. Help us to have our eyes on the mountains, the hills, where from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. So Lord, help us look to you. Look to your holiness, your righteousness. And deliver us from sin. Take sin out of us, Lord. So we can be saved. Us and our household. The church, your people. That your will be done, ours done away. When we claim all these promises, we claim revival and reformation. This we pray in Jesus' name. We thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.